Hey guys, I'm April from Giggle Glitter Graphics, and today I'm going to show you four or four plus ways to add pages into a journal that you have already bound. So with my collage journal, I was flipping through it and I felt like I didn't have enough blank space for either journaling or collage work. I just felt like I focused too much on the printed pages and not enough on pages where I can add a little more. And since I really feel like I can add a lot more <laughs> explosion to this in the long run, I'm going to go ahead and add some pages into this. Now you might add pages in for the same reason, or you might add pages in because like on this page here, I added a sewn element and it's just easier to sew those elements on when the page is outside of the book. Whereas if it was in the book already, trying to get this into the sewing machine is not, not a good time. <laughs> So, so maybe you wanted to do some sewing on some pages and then you're like, how do I get these into my journal? So the first method I'm going to show you, and I'm using coffee dyed paper today. You can use any types of paper. You can use printed papers. Say you don't have enough pattern in your journal. Well then add some printed pages. This goes both ways. So these are just techniques you can adapt to whatever your situation is. So I've got a piece of coffee dyed paper here. I've got some sewn fabric on there. I thought that would be a fun little element to add in. This is a full sheet. I have simply, let me grab a new sheet and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did with this. So all I did was take and fold the sheet in half, right like that, nice and neat. Or as neat as we can get it. I gave it a good crease with my bone folder. And then I, gra I grabbed a scoreboard. You can do this without a scoreboard. And I went to the 3 8 inch mark. I lined this up really well, opened it up, and then I ran a score line from the 3 8 all the way down. And it was a little awkward, so I did it ahead of time. <laughs> I had to hit it at a weird angle because of an extra page flopping around. But I did ink it so you can see what I ended up here with. So that is my center crease. And then I went over three eighths of an inch and I have a second crease. Now what that's going to let me do is run a bead of glue right down this little tiny panel and then add it into my journal. I'm going to add it in for me, I think right onto this piece of graph paper. And when I add it in, I'm not going to push it all the way to the center fold because that could cause some binding and, and buckling. I'm going to make that come out, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch from the center fold. So let's flip over. This is my 3 8 inch extra little tab and I'm using my Beacon Fabri-Tac today. I want to make sure this is in there really good. And running a bead of glue right down there. You can kind of smooth that out if you want. I'm going to just live crazy today and attach this about an eighth of an inch away from the crease. Now once this is dry, I've got a nice folding action on the top panel and then my second panel is gonna fold over using that second crease and then nice and neat fold over when I turn the next page. So that was just a quick, easy, easy way to kind of tuck an extra page in without having to undo your binding or anything else. But let's take it to the next level. So we are gonna repeat that method, but we're gonna make it a little extra fancy. So I've got another sheet of coffee dyed paper. This is a full sheet of paper. It has not been cut. I found a page where I wanted to add this into my journal. And now I, I kind of played with the layers a little bit. I could have folded this so that it comes all the way down top to bottom and I have just a little fold over at the top, but I decided to move this up a little bit and fold it down so I have three layers whenever you get onto this page. And I kind of like that look better. You can adjust that for however your space works out and what you want to show on your page. So I folded that down. And then because I have all this excess out to the side, you can either cut this off so that you just have two panels or what I've done here is I folded it over and then folded it down again. That way you're gonna have a cute little like flip out moment. And I might adjust this a little bit, but I'm gonna get this into the book first and then I can always trim it up in some kind of fun way later. 
which I might do. We'll, we'll see here towards the end. Let me get this in first. <laughs> Now we're going to go to the scoreboard and we're going to do the same thing, that three eighths of an inch. So grab my board. I know, oh, of course, I've got this one pre-scored. So I've got my top fold. I'm just going to go through both layers or if you've cut that off, you have a single layer and score down here at three eighths of an inch. And that way you have the folding action through both layers. I don't know if you can quite see one, two. I've got that three eighths of an inch. Here's the back side so you can see that. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna run a bead of glue right across the top of that and attach it to my page. I'm gonna try to be careful and make sure I'm all the way on the page. Again, don't go all the way into the crease. Leave a little bit of room. I do seem to have a little overhang here. So you'll want to check and when you make your folds, try to make sure that you are accounting for leaving a little bit of space there. I'm going to leave mine be because nothing is ever perfect. It's not too bad. It's just poking out just a little bit. And then sketch that up just a touch. There we go. And now I've got this fun fold out. I think I'm going to leave this. If I wanted to cut it, I would cut it right here along this crease and then that would get rid of this extra kind of square and I would have a flip up that's single layer and then a fold out. And I might still do that when I decide to decorate it, but um, we'll see down the road <laughs> when I get to the decoration part, what I decide to do. All right, two methods down, two to go. This next method, I did trim this sheet up. So again, full sheet of coffee dyed paper. I trimmed a little bit off the bottom on this so that I was sure that this was the same height or smaller as my printed sheet. These principles get trimmed around the edge and so these sheets are just a little bit shorter than the full sheet of coffee dyed paper. So I came in three eighths of an inch, you can sense a theme here, <laughs> and I did my score and fold. And I am just going to attach that right here along this edge. And before I do that, kind of jumped ahead of myself there. We're gonna have that right along the edge. And then I'm gonna fold this back on itself. My paper is very crunchy. <laughs> and I'm gonna do mine, I'm gonna have to overshoot this just a little bit because again, I don't want this to be all pushed all the way up into the crease. I want a little bit of wiggle room. Let's make sure that that's nice and even. Got my bone folder here. Oh, a little decorative piece of paper there. There we go. So, got our tab. I folded it over so that once that the tab is folded under, place it against wherever the edge is that I want to attach. This could go on the top, it could go over to the side, adjust your paper accordingly. Mine is gonna go over here. Folded the paper back on itself so that there's some room here in the crease. And then I'm gonna leave this little piece of extra paper for now. I might trim that off with a decorative scissor or something like that later or attach some lace or ribbon. It's not sticking out past the edge of my journal, so I'm going to leave it be. If it is an issue, cut that off or fold it back over again, just to kind of get it out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna glue this little tab right like this. There we go. And very carefully and without gluing all my pages together, <laughs> I'm gonna glue that right to this edge. So once this dries, I've got flip, I've got this whole page here. I can pull this out. I have this whole page here, but that leaves me with this little tab right here. Now I could have folded it in more and turned this into a tuck, but I do that all the time and I wanted to do something different and maximize the amount of preserved writing or collaging space that I would have. So I went with a 3 8 inch tab and now I'm gonna cover this with a piece of decorative paper. And I thought this was a fun contrast with this old kind of vintage photo look. I might go ahead and make this pocket a little smaller. Let's see, let me grab my, I have my deco edge ruler here. This is one of my principal papers. I have some 
ink, alcohol ink papers up in my shop and I thought these would be a fun contrast to all the vintage collage pieces. I'm really going crazy in this journal. <laughs> There'll be a link to those papers and any other papers, the other papers used to make this journal in the description down below. And there is a video where I made this journal. So let me pop all this off of here. These deckle edge rulers are a lot of fun I got. It's a set of three and there's three different little edges on them and I just like the way that that looks. I am gonna throw some ink on that really quickly and then we're gonna glue down and have a little tuck spot. All right, let's decide which direction I want this to go this way, I think. Again, grabbing my Beacon Fabri Tac, I'm just gonna glue along three edges so we can make a tuck. Little side pocket. And carefully glue that right in place. We don't wanna get too close to the hinge or else it's going to cause some binding and buckling. And there we go, now we have our fun little tuck spot right there and our extra page is in place for our fourth and final technique to add pages to an already bound junk journal i'm going to do kind of a top tuck fold over situation so i've got another page of a coffee dyed paper and i'm using the long ways on this and I'm going to trim it with my paper trimmer so that it is the same width as my page but with that little 1 8 inch gap in the crease there just like that so I'm gonna grab a little pencil I've got a pencil here and make a mark right like that and take my paper trimmer give that a nice little trim And then from here, I'm gonna decide, I think I want this again to waterfall. So I'm going to give it a little fold over. I'm not gonna worry about this being perfect. I just know I want some of this to peek out at the bottom. So now what I'm gonna do is be able to hook this right over the page like that. Now there's some ways to attach this. I can use a paper clip and just clip this in place and have an extra piece and that will work just fine. Or we can go back to our friend, the 3 8 inch crease. Let me grab my, made a little pile of tools here. <laughs> so we've got this extra tab. So we're, let's go back to our friend, the 3 8 inch crease. So I'm going to just push this all the way over and... I haven't done this one ahead of time. I'm going to do it as neatly as I can. A little awkward. There we go. There's our 3 8 inch crease. I'll throw a little ink on that so you can see. Try to ink things up for video. There we go. It's pretty neat. It's not perfect. <laughs> and what I'm going to want to do is take this second crease and fold it the other way. That way, it's going to make a little flip up. Now, you could do this on both sides. In fact, let's do it on both sides. Let's get let's get funky with it. All right, so again, same thing here. Get this all lined up. It's gonna be a little titchy. And make our 3 8 inch crease. So now we've doubled it up. And we're gonna have flippy flops on both sides. So I'm gonna glue this one in. Let's find our, there you go. It's kind of sort of neat, but not really. <laughs> so this is gonna go over the top and you can paper clip it in or use the creases like this and glue it on top so that you have a flip here and then a second flip here. So we need to fold that bone folder and let me go ahead and grab my glue and let's just commit to this we always commit right now this would be a fun place you could sew on a little trim or something like that on the top before gluing this on it's a great opportunity because remember it's easier to sew at the um, sewing machine whenever the paper is not in our journal <laughs> all right and fold it over Line it up at the edge. 
press it into place and there we go now we've got a flip here and turn the page and another flip on the other side we can still enjoy those fun papers have a nice little surprise underneath but we've expanded our decorating or journaling space well thank you for watching i hope that this has helped you find some ways to add paper to your journals i know sometimes we quickly we bind our journal we put it all together and then we're like oh no i could have should have would have sewn something first or I needed more writing space or I wanted to use these papers and I didn't. And this is a great way to get these papers into your journal after the fact. As always, all of the papers I used in here, the vintage flower paper, the vintage collage paper, and then the alcohol ink paper. I used a piece of that. I've got some more of that, got some more of that right here. This is really pretty paper. I'm gonna use some of this in my journal. Links to those are in the description down below and go ahead and check out my Etsy shop. There's lots of goodies in there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.